The sports fields at the edge of the refugee camp look down on the village. This is also the location of the sports office of Right to Play. Project leader Eric van Os discusses with his colleagues. Meetings are the daily agenda for Eric van Os. In the spring of next year, we have to leave the camp. So we're busy training people to take over from us when we leave and keep the project running. We call this four, three, three. Apart from his meetings, Eric also gives theory lessons for the young coaches in the camps. Kedater is one of them. So here, on this side, we have David Beckham. Kedater, what would you do? What to do if, for example, Beckham attacks? Beckham is idolized by Kedater and the other young football-inspired people. And he's moving here. If you were this person, where would you move? The young coaches are being trained to teach the other children football tactics and continue Eric van Oss's work long after he leaves. After the theory, practice follows outside on the large football field. Many, like Kay de Terre, dream of becoming famous football players. I don't know whether I can do this. The only thing I can say is I try and spare no effort. Today is a special day. UN Special Advisor on Sport for Development and Peace, Adolf Oggi, visits Tamhin. He wants the refugees to know that the world has not forgotten them. They are prepared. They show this special guest traditional music and dance from the culture of the Karen, the refugees from Burma. After the applause, a short speech from the guest. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, the two balls, friends, are a symbol, a symbol for a better world. Together we are strong. And together, we can create a better world. A point of view from the refugee village. You see, they just, uh, in every house... 9,000 people live here, one on top of the other in such a small space. Adolf Oggi is very moved. There's no music school, no theatre or cinema, nothing. The only thing that we can offer these young people is playing with a ball. This is our goal. This is so important. The river and its permanent supply of water is the lifeline for the refugees. For water comes only three times a day for one hour from the central tap in the village. Cleanliness is critical. Diseases break out again and again and spread quickly throughout the tightly packed population. The river continues to flow through the village, along and far from the refugee camp. Aile and her children, however, remain here. I hope to get out of here one day. I do not want to return to Burma. 
That's too dangerous. Perhaps into another country that will give us freedom. Late afternoon, after school, hundreds of children meet on the sports fields. They have been locked up here for eight years. The younger ones know only the refugee camp. Some are born here. The older ones perhaps remember that there is still another world outside. A world with a future. Here the future is uncertain. Nobody knows how to carry on. Nevertheless, the children remain happy and the sports and activities divert attention from the misery that surrounds them. <laughs> Six o'clock. The right to play team say goodnight to their colleagues from the refugee camp. From six o'clock in the evening to six o'clock in the morning, they're alone. The refugee children and parents of Tamhin camp are left to fend for themselves. This is the saddest moment of the day. It's very difficult to say goodbye. To you and I, it's just a football match. But it's the only thing that they have. Oh, my God.